Now, there's an important distinction in the medical literature, and many of you who have atrial fibrillation know about these types. There's, it's been grouped into three types. We're trying to get rid of the word chronic atrial fibrillation. You hear that a lot. We're trying to be more specific, and it's like the three P's of atrial fibrillation. So the first P is paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, and that means where it comes and goes all by itself and can last seconds or minutes or hours, but stops on its own. And many people can come to us and have a diary, and they've written down the time it started, the time it finished on a daily or weekly basis, and that's paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. The second P is persistent atrial fibrillation. So persistent atrial fibrillation, by definition, is where it goes into AFib and it stays in it for at least a week, and won't come out of it unless you cardiovert somebody or give some medicines, do some intervention to get it out. So it gets stuck in it. And that persistent, some people have talked about, if it's long-standing, <laughs> it's in atrial fibrillation for a year or more. But the other final and third P is called permanent atrial fibrillation, where the heart has gone into atrial fibrillation, and for one reason or another, we've decided to leave it alone and not try and get a normal rhythm back. And of course, many people live all their lives in permanent atrial fibrillation. Obviously, you need to look at the risk of blood clots and the risk of heart failure and need medical management, but one can leave it there. So, a um, couple of things I want to tell you about why atrial fibrillation is more common. Um, and when you look at this list of factors that sort of predispose you to atrial fibrillation, you see maybe why it's getting more common. The number one reason is that atrial fibrillation, the risk of it just goes up and up as we get older. So because the national population of the country is getting older, more people are living into later life, we see more atrial fibrillation <laughs> simply because of age. The second thing is that it turns out the strongest relationship or risk factor for uh, we see now is hypertension. So I feel, and I tell people this, the atrium is probably a very delicate chamber electrically. So it doesn't take much over time for it to lose its rhythm. Um, so what happens with hypertension, hypertension causes a mild strain on the heart, which the ventricles cope with by thickening up a little bit, but that causes a subtle back pressure onto the atrium, and if they're stretched at all, they tend to lose their rhythm. Now there's probably some genetic element because not everybody with hypertension gets atrial fibrillation, but that is a really common predisposing factor. And the worse it is, the more likely they are to have it. The other big thing I'll tell you we're seeing now is oh, sleep apnea, uh, which is largely weight related. So people who have sleep apnea tend to be at a much higher risk of atrial fibrillation. And the drivers of that, of that are not 100% certain, but it probably, again, is something to do with that strain on their atrium during the night at the time they stop breathing and the chest is trying to pull in air, and this chronic strain causes it. Men are a little more um, uh, likely to get atrial fibrillation than women, although it's not that big a difference, I would tell you. A lot, a lot of women have atrial fibrillation. Um, some genetics. And then again, on this idea that the atrium is a sensitive um, chamber and loses rhythm easily, if you have had anything done with your heart during your life that puts some strains or scars on it, your chance of getting atrial fibrillation in later life goes up. So uh, we see a lot of people who've had heart valve problems in earlier in their lives, had successful heart surgery. Their valve is working great, but that injury to their heart was enough, I tell them, like to prematurely age their atrium maybe, so that later in life they're getting atrial fibrillation, maybe 20 years earlier than they otherwise might have had it. So anything to affect the heart, um, these are the things we see. And just again, a little o o other little things that are a factor. I mentioned the obesity and I mentioned the sleep apnea. People with chronic lung disease, because that strains the right heart, can. There's a somewhat higher risk for people who are diabetic. That may go in with obesity and sleep apnea. Classically, it was uh, associated with being an overactive thyroid. And uh, if you remember the first, uh, the first President Bush, Herbert, he developed uh, atrial fibrillation, but he cardioverted while he was president, and he had actually had an overactive thyroid, was why he had atrial fibrillation during his presidency.
people ask me about is it things in my lifestyle, what I eat, what I do, um, that cause atrial fibrillation. I will tell you the major thing that triggers atrial fibrillation in day-to-day -day life is alcohol. And that is unfortunate that an Irish doctor has to tell you <laughs> that alcohol in this situation could be bad for you. But again, I'm sure there are people here in the audience, if, if they have atrial fibrillation, they, they know. I mean, people know they have maybe two glasses of wine where they usually have one, and that night, or next morning, they'll get atrial fibrillation. There is one of our patients who insists it's European beer that does it. <laughs> and I don't, I don't think it's that specific, but maybe for that person it is. So smoking might increase a little bit. There is another unfortunate um, thing that has come up in recent years. Again, if one is trying to stay fit and healthy, it turns out that people like marathon runners and people who perform a lot of endurance exercise, especially in later life, looks like those, especially men, are more prone to atrial fibrillation. So unfortunately, these folks are doing everything right, staying very healthy and look very fit, but still uh, may actually be making themselves a little more prone to atrial fibrillation. I don't know about stress. I just don't know. I think the data is somewhat inconclusive. As I tell people, most atrial fibrillation happens in night, at night. A lot of people get an early morning or they're in bed and quiet. So it doesn't seem to happen when you're doing things per se. And psychological stress over the long term certainly has many bad effects.